going to wait um, for a couple of more people to get into the to the room. Sorry, I feel like. But if everybody can let me know if they could hear me. Hi, Katrina. Uh, Katina. Hi, Katina. Perfect. Hi, Renee. Everyone can hear and see. Perfect. Amy, Jackie, Krista. Hello, everyone. Perfect. So we'll just give it another couple, uh, just, just, just another minute, just to make sure that everyone's on here. We do once again have a quite a big of an attendance today. Hi, Margaret from Salford, Ontario. Um, so what we'll um, ask at the beginning of the webinar just before we start is because the webinar is going to be a uh, screen sh sharing, we're going to be popping up uh, on the screen to share the information and some videos. Uh, there won't be any way for me to see the questions. So if we can refrain from holding on the questions until the end, and that way I can get to everybody's questions and not miss any of them, and the presentation can can flow until the end because there'll be some videos I want to show. So, and then if by any chance you get frozen or you can't hear all of a sudden or it glitches, just re set, reload your um, your page, and then it should be okay. Okay, so there's more hellos. Hi, Brenda, Jody, Lorena. Perfect. So there's still more people uh, joining in. Uh, hola, hola, Katrina. <laughs> Katina. Um, remember how we said we don't want people asking? Okay, it's fine. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so we could. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Terry. There's a lot of hellos coming in, so sorry if I don't uh, give you a shout out. They're just going very, very quickly. <laughs> so hello, Sandra. Hello, Alicia from Fargo. Alicia from Fargo, North Dakota. Hi, Nicole. I was actually in North Dakota. It was really nice. Well, not recently, but a couple months ago. Uh, you can hear me, Vicky. Perfect. As long as you can hear me and see me as well, that would that's awesome because we're going to be showing some presentation from Cold Lake, Alberta. Welcome, Tanya, Norma. Lots of people joining in. It's a lot. I don't know if I can go through all the shout-outs, but and from Yukon. But I appreciate everybody being here today. Uh, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland. Wow, Prince George. Awesome. I appreciate everybody being here today for our brow styling uh, webinar. As you know today, uh, so I'm just going to introduce myself just so we don't have any uh, confusion with names. <laughs> so my name is Chrissy. Uh, I am the head trainer for Reflectisil for North America. So I do a lot of these webinars. I do a lot of education. Uh, I take care of the education here at the office. So it's my pleasure to be here with everybody uh, to be able to talk about brow lamination by Reflectisil. So we're going to get started with the presentation because I believe everybody has been okay uh, joining on. And once again, just remember if we can keep the questions to the end. And this way the presentation can flow good and I can get back to everybody's uh, questions. Okay. So we're going to start with the presentation. We'll just put the first slide up of... Um, okay. Just give us one second to share the screen. And then can you see me in the corner and then the screen that's going to be shared in the middle? As long as everybody can see that. Do you have the presentation? Oh, yes. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. We're on a good start. Okay. Because I can't see now the questions. Okay. So because we're screen sharing. So as I mentioned today, our presentation is this hot and trending look that's been uh, hitting our social media um, for a couple of months now, and it's the brow lamination, and it's gonna be by Reflectisil. Okay, so let's start going to the slides. And at the beginning of the slide, I want to put a little bit, if somebody's new to uh, Reflectisil, just a little bit of uh, information about the company, just to know what brand uh, quality brand you're getting into, right? So uh, Reflectisil, a world leading brand since 1930. So they've been around for over 70 years. Uh, they they are prominently represented in more than 65 countries, so they're out there. Everybody knows Reflectisil. When we do trade shows, or even when I do trainings, or people 
we'll tell come to our booth and say, yeah, we've been using the tints for over 30 years or depending how long you've been in the industry. So it's got a good name out there. It's got good quality. It's been around for so long, being innovative, um, keeping up with the trends. So when you look for a brand, that's something you want to look for, okay? Uh, so Reflectisol Lash and Brow Tints have been proven and recognized due to millions of successful applications. So even just by seeing uh, people tagging us in social media and showing us their beautiful work with uh, eyebrow tinting, lash tinting, lash lifting, it's, it's very well recognized, okay? So let's go on to our next slide. The trends. Let's talk about now our brow lamination trend or our brow lift. So we know that everyone wants them, but few of us have them. So that's beautifully defined, full yet natural looking eyebrows, but without the painful treatments of permanent makeup. So uh, we have like the microbladings out there, the feathering treatments, the uh, you know permanent makeup. Uh, these can sometimes uh, they, they tend they are invasive, like actually the microblading which does cuts into the skin to be able to give that uh, hair-like look, a little that, um, sorry, look like hairs of the brow. So they can become really invasive. Some people might not be able to do services like that or just a fear of doing a service like that. Uh, you have now the option of doing your brow lift your, uh, that can give that more natural look and be able to give you the fuller brows with whatever hair that we're, we're able to work with that's there. Okay, so the new brow lamination trend creates more volume, stability, and fullness. So the service, so the new brow lamination by Reflectisol Service breathes new life into eyebrows. And sorry about that, there's supposed to be a space there. Eyebrows and coerces the brow hairs into ideal shape that will last and last. So that coercing of the hair is where it comes in the hand of the professional to be able to move around those hairs to create the different looks that are that you can um, create with brow lamination. And we'll see pictures with that. We'll see pictures of uh, different looks that you can do with the uh, brow lamination according, accordingly to how you brush the hairs or how you move the hairs or where you place the hairs uh, when applying the solutions. So use the Reflectisil Eyelash Lift Kit or the Reflectisil Eyelash Curl Kit to define and lift brow. So I have a little slide on that um, as well to show that these kits are multi-use, are dual. They can do both services in just one kit. Uh, the semi permanent setting solution works in just 13 minutes and can be used in just nine simple steps. And we'll go through those steps. And I put a little bit, some video clips with each of the steps just to see it since we're, you know, doing our social distancing and uh, avoiding uh, that contact with a human, uh, with each other. Uh, I'm not able to do, usually my live webinars are hands-on, so you can see the treatment, but unfortunately you can't do that. So we have the videos to, to give you the, the, the service of what it can look like, okay? So as I mentioned, secrets out. You can now use your eyelash lift kit and your curl kit to do all your lashes and brow services when it comes to lift because your solutions in both of the kits are what you're going to be using for your brow lift as well. So a lot of brands out there, they have um, a, a separate kit for this, but ours is the same kit, cuts down cost, uh, no need to buy a separate kit, um, and just replacing that solution as well. Uh, you'll just need to replace more often solution if you are filling in lash lift services and brow services a lot, the tubes will will um, need to be replaced. As we mentioned, it works fast. There's some out there that might take a little bit longer, maybe 15 minutes, but uh, ours works in just three minutes when you break down the two solutions. So eight and five minutes. And then versatile results for unique styles such as, and we'll get to that, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the lash permanent neutralizer. So as you can see, these are the same tubes. If you're already a Lash Lift user from Reflectisil, they are the same tubes that uh, they are going to be using on the Brow Lift. And just to know about the ingredients that are in here so that you're aware of um, the, the, the brand that you're using, the, the product that you're using, that the ingredients are uh, going to be catering, going to be caring to your client's hairs on their face, on their brows, and to their lashes. So with ingredients like collagen and cysteine, you'll be able to provide a nourishing lift. And that's what we want. We don't want anything to be stripping away from the brows or the um, 
when you're doing a lash lift, but we want to be able to give the, the health, keep the health of the hairs, um, the original state of the hair. So collagen is one of the commonly occurring structural protein in the human body and amino acid cysteine. These two ingredients work together in hair development, but also conditioning and protecting the hairs on their brows during the service. So now you know that these ingredients are going to be helping to sustain the hair because Reflectisil is all about providing services for uh, the lash and the brows that are safe, that are not going to be harsh because you are working around the eye area and you are working on hair that's less, that's softer, that's less, um, thinner, uh, that could be thinner on the um, eyebrows and lashes. So we want, so that's when it comes to research where if you're using a kit and the ingredient might be something like a keratin treatment, this is where research, you have to figure out what is that keratin? What does it do? So when we think of keratin treatments, when it comes to our hair that we want to uh, create that smooth, slick, softer look, um, if you got to keep a timing that it says, if you go uh, against that timing, it's like you go longer in the, in the timings that it, that the solution should stay on the hair. Same with the lashes. There are, uh, keratin lift systems. If you go past the time and like, Oh, you know, my customer has thick, longer lash, thicker, lash, let me go longer. What happens with the keratin ingredient is that it reverses the, um, the effect, uh, reverses. It doesn't smooth it, but instead it will damage it. And that's another thing a very popular question that we get asked at trade shows when they line up because they want to buy the kit because they want to keep everything refectisil. They say, will your lift um, damage my um, my client's lashes because uh, the lift that I use from another brand did damage my, uh, the lashes. And I mostly I ask, the first thing I ask is, um, instead of asking the brand name, I say, is it a keratin treatment? And they say, yes, and say, well, this is the reason why. So I'm sure if you keep the timing uh, proper, you shouldn't have that effect. But if you want a product that you can trust, that you won't have that issue and you can not compromise the health of your clients, lashes and brows, uh, Reflectisil can, uh, can, can be your choice. Okay. Uh, just one, one thing, uh, Tasha, quick question. If we want to see if everybody can still hear, we can't go back to the question and just see. I just want to keep an update that people can see. But is there a way or no to go? Oh, you can see it? Okay, perfect. Okay. I was just sorry for that. I just wanted to make sure that everybody can still see me or hear me. Because once again, I can't see the uh, dialogue box. So I'm not ignoring you. Okay. <laughs> Um, so now we go to the results. So did you know with the uh, lift that you can create three different types of looks? So uh, the first look is what we call the soapy brows. Personally, that was my favorite. I have no idea why. I just loved that that look because it reminded me of uh, an actress called Carol uh, uh, Carol or Karen Delevingne, Delevingne. And it's just a beautiful look that I, I like. But now you can have three two other looks, which is a laminated, which is more pressed down. It looks like that when you think of laminating, that's what it looks like, very pressed down and very fixed. And then you have the one that's fluffy or feathered. So you can kind of coerce the hairs, like maneuver the hairs around a little bit slightly with your brush to give them a more fluffy look before you put the neutralizer that's gonna give its uh, structure, right? So uh, you get to choose. And all this, these looks, are how you manipulate the hair when it, with your with your brush and how you're applying the solution. Okay. So complete the look with a tint afterwards. So this is all you would need to do your wonderful lashes, uh, lash lifts, or your brow lifts, uh, because you would want to always uh, do a lift service with a tint because the tint's going to enhance the look. So for now, we're talking about brows. We already know with lashes when you tint afterward, the look looks even more dramatic so the same thing will happen with um the hairs on the brows especially with people who might have a little bit more spacing yes the um the brow lift will give that more fullness look if the brows tend to get a little bit more more spaced out there's a lot less hair to work with that tint afterwards can give that uniformed look okay so that the fullness stays uniform throughout the whole way okay but uh tinting afterwards uh brow lamination uh enhances that look and we'll see in the videos and it looks just beautiful and stunning and the brows are bold and beautiful okay and once again you're going to control the timing of the tint to what your customer wants if they don't want that extreme bold look your timing obviously will be lessened so now we go through and the video starts right away but let me rewind that got it <laughs> 
So we're going to go through our step number one and two, which is our prep. And the prep is first with your micellar eye makeup remover, um, which has lash strengthening properties. So it has a lot of these amino acids inside that's going to give um, uh, hydration, moisture to the hair. So we're not doing anything to, once again, uh, strip the healthiness of the condition of the hairs. Um, you need to do this and afterwards you need to use your saline solution because you want that security, that double cleanse, any natural oils that are left behind even after your micellar eye makeup remover, you want to be able to remove those as well because everything, the solutions will work well with the hairs when you do this step number two with the saline. Same goes with your lift. If you are a lift user, please, uh, like for lashes, sorry, same goes with the lashes, please use these two steps. Even if your client comes in without any makeup, it is, I highly stressed out that you must be using, doing a prep, even without any makeup. We've got the environment, the, the, the uh, environmental factors of the pollution. If the person is sweating, um, they might have come from the gym or um, hot season, so they sweat a lot more. Uh, you need to do this cleanse, cleanse. And sometimes some makeup can be embedded into the hair still, even after uh, they've washed their face, okay? And then using their rubber spoolie, we find our brushes, uh, our, we've got new brushes out, and on the one end has a rubber spoolie, and on the other hand has the, the brush, a uh, nice black and rose gold look. And you, as you saw in the picture above before we went to the slide, I showed the whole picture of the tints. These new brushes are amazing, and with the rubber spoolie, it's better to go with the rubber than the hard bristles in the uh, disposable mascara wand because when you're uh, trying to coerce those hairs or trying to shape those hairs, you want to use something softer because the solution, um, uh, first of all, can be a little bit sensitive on the skin, but it, 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 you're processing the hairs. So you don't want to be rough with the hairs. So using these rubber spoolies are awesome, okay? So if you haven't ventured into our brushes yet, I'm sure hopefully your local distributor when we soon reopen will be carrying these new Reflectisol brushes. So let's watch the video just to show you the product, really simple with your prep, okay? Perfect, so very simple. So brush those after you've done the eye makeup remover and the saline solution, you want to brush those hairs up for now and when you uh, and then you can place a solution. You want them all individualized, okay? So doing that brush in an upward mo motion. So let's go to the next slide. I'm gonna pause that. So your next step would be to apply the lash perm solution, which is your number one, to the whole brow. Advice, start from the root of the brow and apply in the same direction as when you would brush the brow. So, so upward to the side, that's how you would want to uh, start applying the solution. Use the rubber spoolie to brush the eyebrows thoroughly and comb into the desired shape. So this is where you're going to implement the type of uh, shape or style that the customer wanted in their brows. And this is where you're going to take your rubber spoolie and if they want that soapy look, what I do for my own brows is when I do the lamination is I take the the spoolie and I rub upwards, 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 upwards. So I get that soapy look. But then when you want the more feathery, you're going to be doing upwards halfway, not full way and slightly separating them. And then when you want the more not laminated, you can do it upwards, but brushing it to the side. So it's how you maneuver your, your brush in this in these movements to create that look. Because once you apply the neutralizer, that's what's gonna give that structure afterwards. That's what's gonna shape the hair, okay? So make sure that you don't apply the product to the skin. Keep it always on the brows of the hairs because as it touches skin, people who might have sensitivities, it will create sensitivities and you'll start seeing uh, redness because it's meant for the hair, not for the skin. Okay, um, and then uh, clean off any unwanted overspill with a dry cotton pad. That's what I do, cotton bud. If I see that I've gotten solution after I've applied it or brushed it, because it's kind of hard to, you will get some solution when you're brushing the brow. I take a cotton swab and I just do a nice clean cut, a, spa, a clean a swipe. And I like to do it right away. Uh, don't leave it sitting on the skin for too long because especially if your customer does have some sensitivities, you don't want it sitting on there. Then it says to leave the lash from solution in for about seven to eight minutes. So you vary this timing depending on the hair structure. If there's less hair, if the hairs are thinner, you don't want to go full eight minutes. 
um, uh, you would you would go in between uh, seven and eight. Sometimes even five uh, five to eight. Okay, in between that timing. Um, if you've decided to use browse sheets, what they mean by browse sheets is if you're decided to use your saran wrap to hold the brows in place, uh, this is when you would place them. After you've brushed the uh, brow, after you put the solution, you brush the brows in the direction that you want them to be, and then you've cleaned the skin, then you place your saran wrap. Your saran wrap will uh, lessen the timing of the solution on the hairs because of that heat that's being implemented in there from the saran wrap. So you would leave it on for five minutes. And then you would remove the lash perm solution with a dry cotton bud or pad. Uh, dry, do not put any water. And then once again, go in the same directions when you comb the hair because you want it to structure to that direction. Uh, before you apply the neutralizer and then correct any individual hairs if there's too much clumping or too much brush it through and get them separated according to that look that they want I always once again go back upwards 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 because I like that uh, soapy look so let's watch the video okay so very very simple once again the video they're pretty pretty quick uh, steps to do. And as you noticed, uh, if we can put that again, she was going, um, you got the solution, your pea size amount. So you see right here where she's applying the solution. We're not going very rough. You're not getting it in there. You're not going back against the hair. You're like, you would do with like a bleach. You wanna be as soft as you can when man manipulating these hairs. You do not be abrasive, do not be harsh, okay? And then we have your neutralizer. So apply the neutralizer, uh, repeat step three, which is to uh, brush them, right? You wanna apply the neutralizer on there and then you want to leave it on for five minutes. So the original times are eight and five. When they say between seven and eight is depending on the, on the hair type. So for your lash perm, you can choose between seven or fully keeping it eight, depending on the thickness of the brows, and then the neutralizer will remain five minutes to structure that hair to the shape. Then remove the neutralizer with a damp cotton pad, and then clean the brow area, because you want to prep it, uh, and just with the water, it's fine, uh, but if you want to, you can use a saline solution to remove any of that uh, residue from the neutralizer that might be on there uh, before you tint. So you're gonna apply it again, the same direction you want the hair to go to and you're going to give that little brush she goes back in here which you can do that i do that with my brows especially uh since i don't want to use a saran wrap to hold them into place i don't want that heat i don't want that um extra step i just go well extra step but just extra product to use uh, which is buying an extra supply i like to just go in with my brush and that tool that she has is really nice it's not abrasive it's uh very it's usually usually for lash extensions too but you can swipe through to the brows to separate them nicely. And so that's making sure the neutralizer is forming them okay. So you can do that in between and then let it sit on there for the five minutes, okay? So the next step will be implementing your tinting. So after you wipe them with the saline solution, you can mix your colors. Here we have light brown and graphite. Graphite adds beautiful like coolness to the uh to the brown so if they want a cool brown you can add the graphite at a half to half ratio uh equal parts and then you're going to leave the tint on for three minutes so usually when you do lashes when you lift lashes we say two minutes brows will have a lot more hair to work with in general like the average client might have a lot more hairs that uh you'll be working with so you want to leave it on for that three minutes to be able to penetrate use a rubber spoolie to reshape the brows after you've removed the tint because after you've wiped it, you have to re just redirection the hairs. They'll stay in that way, no worries, but with your spoolie. Then is where you can do your brow styling afterwards as well, meaning you can do your waxing, your tweezing, whatever you're doing. And then also because the brows are going to be more to the lifted position, they might look uneven. You do a uh, little bit of the shaping with the scissors to uh, trim down any of those excessively long uh, hairs that are not matching the rest of the hairs or the, the way the brow is flowing. Okay, so let's watch this video. Okay. 
Okay, perfect. So very simple, very straightforward. You can see after she brushed them, she can get the, the, the brows back to their position. Okay, because and once they dry, uh, they'll be back to uh, that uh, look that they want. Okay. So after that, uh, when you've done all your steps, you want to be able to provide an aftercare. This product, if you don't know Styling Gel, please, please uh, purchase it. Have it in your station. If you don't have a lash and brow bar, it's awesome to purchase as well. It looks beautiful as a caddy with all your colors, all your items to do tinting. Excuse me, but the Styling Gel is something that you want to be using after your treatment to give it, excuse me, a finished look, um, give it that gloss, but also give it that protection as well. Um, it's got inside deep panthenol that's going to help with the uh, moisturizing. Okay, so apply that on top to the hairs, brush them with a disposable uh, mascara. Once again, be very gentle when you're brushing the styling gel on there, and that will be your final step to your brow lamination. So here is your styling gel. Okay, perfect, beautiful look. Okay, so this, once again, the styling gel is going to hydrate, protect the brows, style them as well. It is styling them because styling them it's like a gel and it keeps them into place. This is a retail item as well. You can sell it to your customer for home care um, and they could be using this every day even after they wash their face, they're ready to um, uh, style their makeup or whatever and they want their brows to just maintain the, the shape, the style throughout the day, they could use the styling gel. At the same time, it gives beautiful gloss to the hair, it gives shine, it protects it, it even uh, seals in that treatment, keeps that treatment to stay longer, okay? And then here's your before and after. See how you can manipulate the brows that you already had, your client already had, that they weren't really happy with because they do covet those thick, thick, nice fluffy brows and look at that just with no invasive treatment you can get that look and then tinting afterwards just to give that fullness as well so it's a beautiful look which uh as soon as we reopen our businesses um a lot of people once we get into the norm and you know having our practices of infection control in place a lot of people will be coming to seek this uh brow treatment Another tip is these eye care pads that we're going to be avail having available soon with vitamin E. And we do know that vitamin uh, D E, sorry, works as a moisturizer. Uh, along with the hyaluron, you're able to create an intense treatment to their uh, eye eyes. So this is a nice uh, um, care that you can give to your customer uh, a beautiful service like an all-around service you can give to your customer so when you're doing their lash lift or their brow lift their lash tinting or whatever brow services you're doing on your brows or your lashes implement these pads with the vitamin e and hyaluron so you're giving them an actual beautiful um um eye treatment and with the vitamin e2 it's it's been said to have helped you with any dark circles. So during that, whatever time it took you, uh, if it took you 20 minutes to do your brow lamination, they're laying down there relaxed, like they're because they're in a spa treatment and they're getting that um, eye care treatment as well. Okay, so these are available, will be available very soon. So how does the salon, uh, sorry, how does the salon uh, benefit? With the new brow lamination by Reflectisil Trend Service, brows are perfectly defined and set into the desired position for a lasting finish. So you as a salon is able to create this look, this service for your clients. A brow lift is the perfect way to get especially disruptive or stubborn eyebrows, eyebrow hairs into tip top shape, cover any gaps and magic up the full effect uh, sorry, the full uh, up. Sorry, magic up the effect of full dense eyebrows. Okay, so you're it's it's you're giving them that look, that magic look, because you're able to go from no brow, almost thinning brow, thin brow to a full fluffy brow, and didn't have to use any um, microblading or and. In, in, invasive treatment. This new service can be expanded to include Reflectisil eyelash lift kits or Reflectisil eyelash curl kits for a practical two-in-one treatment. So we mentioned that as a benefit, a benefit to you that you have this one kit that's going to do both services for you. Uh, generate valuable extra revenue with this new trend service and use the opportunity to increase your customer loyalty. 
Now we go to the benefit of the client, the customer. So laminating brows has an immediate effect on the density and shape of the brows. So they're going to get those coveted brows that they've been desiring all this time. Now they're going to have their nice fuller looking and denser eyebrows, but the natural way. Uh, and then by permanently shaping the hair gap, hairs, gaps can be perfectly filled without painful treatments such as microblading or permanent makeup, especially suitable for bushy, stubborn hair. So people who either might not have the income to be doing a brow, brow microblading um, can afford to be going back for touch-ups. I know there's only once a year for touch-up, but the price fee can be more than... Um, what they've expected, but also uh, getting um, having that fear of doing that invasive treatment, these customers are going to come to you looking for this service. Okay, and then the the reason to believe in Reflectasil and their lift kit. Well, as we mentioned at the beginning, it's a long-standing brand with decades of expertise in brown lash styling services. You, um, they are the market leader in the sector. So you want a brand that you're going to have uh, trust in, you're going to have confidence in using because you know you're going to have also support from the brand um, with these, even with these uh, webinars, these educational webinars that we're doing to help you uh, be refreshed or be up to top with these services and the proper protocols so that your results come out uh, stunning and your customers are coming back. They're re occurring clients, right? Uh, Reflectisil has recognized the brow lamination trend and found a solution that's as simple as it's efficient. So as, as this is becoming very repetitive, but just as stressed out because as other brands, they have created their a separate brow kit as opposed to using their lash lift kit. But with the Reflectisil, the components of the lash perm and neutralizer found the eyelash lift kit and the eyelash curl kit are used for both uh, the lashes, but also to lift and define the brows to get these perfect results. Okay, so it's been repetitive, but it's just a stress out that this is a benefit to you as well. So this is the end of our brow lamination webinar, but here we have a page showing um, you what other educations we're gonna have online for, what other webinars we're gonna have for the month of May. Uh, we do have one that's for coming up on the 6th on basic tinting. So for anybody who has not introduced any of these lash and brow services into the salon, haven't yet, uh, or is new to the industry, or is starting to open up a business and wants to bring in basic tinting because they are easy add-on service with great revenue, well, this is the webinar for you. Um, we're gonna have a May 8th uh, Q&A with myself because a lot of, um, questions are being asked and in order for me to be able to answer them to the, uh, a bigger mass uh, these Q and A's have been very very effective sometimes a lot ugh, too many questions so I have to do these Q and A's often to be able to next time answer uh, questions that were missed on the previous Q and A then we have male grooming which I've been getting a lot of feedback on that or a lot of emails like can we use tinting on uh, male clientele yes so we're going to talk about tinting but we're also going to talk about um, uh, also, uh, sorry, we're going to talk about uh, using the curl as well for male clientele and also a little sneak peek to a wonderful wax by Karan Lab on grooming, uh, male grooming for facial. And then we have back by popular demand. We have our brow styling, uh, custom coloring and shaping. So we have a bleach that's safe to use for your brows and our colors can be mixed to create endless amount of other colors as well, but you can also create your, your pinks, your purples, uh, and then using the bleach, how you're gonna use it properly, effectively, with no damage and safely, and as well, being able to mix the color so you can reach more of your clientele, more looks, more people. If you're a makeup artist, you sometimes might be dealing with runway trends or doing fashion show, doing makeup for fashion show, so you can become more, um, expanding your services to provide variety of colors uh, on the brows. So, and then once again, we're gonna be talking about Bravado, uh, which is a waxing from Quran Lab and how to precisely with accuracy, with no oops moments, uh, like if wax spills onto the brows, you won't have any of this issue with this wonderful Quran uh, Bravado uh, gel wax. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit in the webinar, but since we talked about Quran Lab, the next slide actually shows you our um, Quran Lab uh, education as well. So I highly recommend if you're a waxer, um, if you're looking into waxing, please uh, join um, 
uh, register for these webinars. I'll show you in the next slide uh, how to register for these webinars and who will be ho hosting these webinars. So as you can see, May 1st, May 11th, May 14th, you have a Brazilian waxing. Then you're going to have a more in-depth look at bravado so what i'll be presenting is very little just to excite you and then um, you can register for the may 11th to see how amazing this wax uh, will be with some videos um, as well or uh, demos and then may 14th uh, how to strengthen your waxing skills now so that for when you uh, reopen holly will uh, show you this so on the next slide you will see where you can register so at the instagram account um Carl lab north america you can't there's a link in the bio that you can register for all these classes they're all up for the month of may so register for all of them all at once uh, okay uh and then um if you uh likes go to uh Crown Lab north america on facebook like the page there uh if you want to go visit the website it's www.coronlab.com and if you have any questions as well for Quran lab there's holly holly is the head trainer for North America for Quran Lab, and you can email her. If you're already a user of Quran Lab and you need help, or if you're interested in this, uh, finding out where you can purchase, uh, you can um, have that email for Holly, okay? And then the final page is for me to say thank you. Thank you for joining. Uh, we're not done yet, we'll answer the questions. But just say thank you also to uh, um, follow us on Refectical North America on our Instagram. If you're not already following us, follow us there for great more information and also uh, keeping up to date when our next webinars are. Um, but also like us on Refectical North America. Leave us a review if you feel so we know how you're enjoying using um, Refectical. Uh, the educational website is an amazing tool to, to use all of these webinars, the recording webinars, do get put onto our refectusaleducation.com for you to be able to review the steps. There are some previous webinars on there where I actually did do live demonstrations of the lash lift. So if you're actually uh, interested in doing as well a lash lift, uh, go ahead and watch uh, watch those uh, webinars. And if you have any questions. Uh, for me, you know, for protocols, um, if you're having some technical issues uh, with the techniques, uh, refectusal.education at cbngroup.com. You can reach to me and I can assist you. Okay, and that was the end of the slide. So let's go back to your, sorry, I hid, um, I hid that little thing by accident. Okay, <laughs> I couldn't see. Oh, perfect. Okay, so we're going to go back to the questions so I can see all the questions that were asked. Okay, so let's go. We're just scrolling just to find the questions because it was all the hellos from before. I believe there's still more questions being typed in, which is awesome. Okay. Oh. Oh, sorry. Someone had an enlarging. Um, wow. A lot of shout outs. Sorry. Just give me one second until we go lower. Okay, so there was a question from Celine. I know questions at the end. However, please speak to how the treatment works on clients who have had microblading, any side effects. So if they have done a microblading, uh, usually you want to wait the, uh, over six weeks. You want to wait a, um, a couple months, though, uh, because of the healing. And then if you want to do a, um, a, a brow lift. But the thing is, people, a lot of people who are doing a microblading have hardly any hair very less hair a lot of gaps so the microblading might not be an i'm sorry the lash lift might not be an effective way to use with microblading um because the looks will kind of not integrate properly but if you wish to try a, a brow lift on somebody who has done a microblading wait till maybe a, a month or two and then um you can do it. There shouldn't be any reactions. But once again, with anything that you do, if it's uh, new to the client, you have to do a patch test. So do a patch test with the solutions and see if everything's okay, that they're not allergic to it. And then you can go ahead and do a, uh, a lift on a microblading. Whatever hairs are there, 
underneath the microblading are going to form to the one of those looks that we have the soapy the but once again it might not because the microblading is more fixed the hairs because they're just the ink the the tint that's been embedded into the the cuts that you've done uh, you might get very uneven look okay um oh did we just i don't know where that question went oh, oh microbiome okay good okay so if you log okay so this is um is there a way for me to get this powerpoint sent to my email i'm missing some notes so jessica uh, the PowerPoint will be emailed out afterwards, and this webinar will, the recording of this webinar will be put onto our reflectitaleducation.com website for you to review again. Um, so, Katrina, uh, sorry, I can't see that far. Can you occlude around the brow prior to application to minimize contact on the skin? So, when you say occlude, do you mean putting something there, like a protection cream or something like that? Because if you're going to put something to protect the skin around the brow area, you have to make sure that, that that doesn't get put onto the hairs. Or when you're brushing, that doesn't get pulled down into the brush into the hair because the creams or whatever you're using to protect can, or the Vaseline if you're going to use, can work as a barrier and not get the effect that you need. So if you just take your brush and work onto the hairs, you shouldn't have an issue. They will be feeling slight tingling sensation, which is fine. Uh, but then if you let it rest on bigger portions of the skin, you don't want that because redness will occur as well. And you want to, don't want to allow that to happen. So what I do, even if I get a little bit onto the skin when I brushed, I just take my cutin cotton swab and I wipe it and my client's good. A little bit of redness is fine too. Once again, as we said, that's just a little bit of a tingling effect. But don't leave it staying on there throughout the whole treatment because that can result to a little bit more of a bigger reaction. Okay. Um, do you have to use a plastic wrap? Nope, I've never used it one single time since I've done my brow lamination. It's used usually as well to uh, uh, make the service a little bit faster because you, as you can see, the contact time has been cut down to five minutes instead of having a seven or eight when you're using the saran wrap. Also, because people, if you're not using a glue, a lot of other lash lift systems, they will use a glue as well. So they'll put the glue, to hold the lashes down, then they put the saran wrap. Too many steps. With the Reflective Cell, there's no need for that. So you avoid having to use the glue and also the saran wrap. But if you feel that you're working with somebody that has really, really, really maybe bushy brows or very unruly brows and whatever you're doing to make them brush up, they're causing you trouble, you might want to use a saran wrap just to hold it down. And all you do is just take that saran wrap, either you use two pieces and go this way or one piece and hold it and lay it flat this way onto the brows. Okay, so it's optional. Um, sorry. I just lost my questions. I had one. Everybody would like the PowerPoint? Yes, you will be getting it into an email. How much do you charge for the service? So you don't want to really charge, this is for Jennifer, you don't really want to charge too much because the thing with the um, brow lamination is it doesn't last as long as the lash lift. So usually a lash lift is 65 to 85, I guess you can say. I would probably go uh, maybe even 50, 50 to 70 between that range. But the thing is, the service is very, very hot right now. You know, people are going to be wanting to get this done once the business opens. So the pricing, you might not want to keep it, you might want to keep it the same as, as a lash lash lift, but also make aware to your client that it doesn't last eight weeks or six weeks um, on the brows. It's more topical, it's more on the front of, it's on the lashes, more uh, visible here. It gets more interaction with oils and stuff like that, so it won't la it last as long. Um, sorry, if I'm, if I'm missing any questions, repost them again if I miss anything. Uh, PowerPoint, PowerPoint. 
Wow, that's crazy. Lori, is that because of the picture, the before and after, the difference? Because it's amazing, the results. Even when I tried it on myself, uh, my brows are thinning out a lot as I'm getting older. And you know, when I went to school over 15 years ago, it was so much focus on the waxing. And uh, my brows, they I had beautiful, thick, thick, thick brows, and the waxing made them very thin. But when I did the brow lamination, I put side by side the thin of my brown and the brows and the thickness. I was so amazed that my brows were able to do that. And it frames your face nicer. I find, you know, for myself personally too, um, the bigger, bigger, more predominant brows, face, uh, brows um, frame my face nicely. So it's a beautiful look. Does anyone retail the micellar eye makeup remover? It's a professional use, Brittany. They retail uh, the micellar eye makeup remover. It's for uh, professional use to keep it with the Reflectosol line when you're doing these treatments. Add-on is a great add-on service. If you're going to be doing a, uh, a eyelash lift, you can do a for um, an eyebrow add-on. If you're doing um, a shaping um of their brow you're waxing their brows and you want to give them they, they want a fuller look because tinting doesn't really give them that look well it's a perfect add-on service as well okay um sorry if somebody's screen froze you just have to refresh it if it freezes i don't know how long ago this was the question but um refresh it yes everybody's asking about the powerpoint uh, but you will get them in the email uh Terry says, I don't, but with these new services, I'm going to. I, I'm wondering if uh, you're going to be offering the services we mentioned, maybe even offering as well tinting if you don't originally do this. Um, glad to hear that the information is amazing for you guys. It's, it's decent enough. Um, yeah, everybody wants the PowerPoint. So uh, Claudia, as you mentioned, as we had mentioned, it doesn't last um, uh, up to six to eight weeks as the lash, um, lash lift does. So as I mentioned, educate us to your customer, give them maybe a four week. I think for me, it lasted between three to four. The, I was going to check and see with a um, saran wrap if it helps it last longer. But once again, if you've got an oily skin, uh, these can break down the service faster. So I don't think the saran wrap would make a difference in extending the, um, the wear, wear of a brow lift. But uh, I got almost a four week out of it until my brows started to want to go back to their natural. Um, and sometimes you might get some that are going back and some that are not. So you don't have that un that uh, unison. So you would have to do it again. Um, how long does it last? And is it the same as lash? So we, um, we mentioned how long it lasts for. So it can vary between, it can vary, it can go up to four weeks, I would say. Um, but for some, it might be three weeks. Uh, where uh, you can use water so they're asking so i think it's hamit is asking harmit is asking if you can use water afterwards so same with your lash uh, lift you can go right away and use water because we are using water to remove the solutions or afterwards the tint so water doesn't affect the results but you must stay away from anything that's oil even if you're going to be putting any makeup onto the brows avoid that for uh for a couple of hours so maybe three hours because usually we say for lash lift you shouldn't be putting any mascara for three hours later and with oils if you're going to be using maybe our castor oil that we have or care balm at nighttime uh, you want to wait um, 24 hours okay so avoid anything oily for 24 hours and avoid any makeup for a couple maybe about three hours um so the questions are being repetitive so i hope i answered the questions about how long will it last, how much your service can cost. Can this be used to straighten super curly brows? Yes, you can use the, the lash perm to relax the brows. So if you have a lot of like kink in the brows, you can use a lash perm to relax it. Um, if you want to reshape it, use a neutralizer because a neutralizer is what's gonna give shape. So if you're just doing just to relax it and they might, uh, fall down not have any shape see if they want shape then use the neutralizer as well to form them into a shape um try to use them both in together than just the lash perm and so that because the brows might fall downwards if they don't want that look um so i hope that answered your question uh 
I think I'm getting the name wrong, but Kateria, Kateria. Uh, so you can use it to um, straighten curly brows. Sorry, Adith, I don't know why you couldn't see any brows. I'm sorry, any slides. I think everybody else is able to see the slides, if I'm correct. I'm not quite sure why you weren't able to. Right now, we took the slides off so that I can answer questions. Uh, can you do a lash lift at the same time as a brow lift? For sure. Uh, you would have to organize your timing properly. So for your lash lift, we leave on the full eight minutes. Sometimes you can even leave them a slightly little bit longer if they're thicker layered lashes. So while the solution is going on there, you can break your time and go and do the, um, the lash from solution onto the brows and then go back and remove and the timing remove. But you'll have to play your times accordingly so that you don't leave it on too long on the brows. Or too long on the lashes so um but it can be done i've done i've done both separately but i've done them both the time together both services lashes and brows but organize my time properly if uh if if my time is running out on my brows to remove the lash perm and i'm on step number two to put the neutralizer i wait i wait to put the neutralizer i go to the brows remove the lash perm from the brows go back to the lashes put the neutralizer and then go back to the brows and put the neutralizer Okay, so you'll get that flow according to your speed um, and time. Okay. Um, so I wasn't able to see your questions or questions or comments. That's why because we had to do a sh screen sharing to show the videos. Uh, so the PowerPoints. Once again, I will uh, I will email them to whoever registered here afterwards. Um, could you go over again your brushing direction techniques for the different looks, please? Per, sure. So this is for Kayla. Uh, so how you position the hairs of the brushes. So when you put, first you're just going to do your original brush. Brush your brows so that you can get them all separated because after you remove the makeup, they're all bunched together. So brush them before you put the lash perm. Once you put the lash perm on, I go back and I just uh, brush the brush according to how I want the lashes to 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 go so if I want that more soapy look I will be making them up and towards the opposite direction right upwards and to the opposite so that they get that more soapy look if I want the more laminated look I will go up but I will try to to kind of slide them over to the side and then if you want them more feathered I go up but not too much the opposite side slightly and try to get in between the hairs to separate them too with the brush. Like try to get like a little like movement where you're separating the, the hairs so they can create that fluff look. So it's which direction you're uh, applying them. So most of the times you're going upwards. You're always gonna be going upwards for all three looks, but some of them are gonna go more to the left and more to the right and more to the center, if that makes sense. Um, how long for Michelle? How long will the brow dye stay on the skin if it if it nicely fills in gaps for fullness what do you recommend once the tint fades from the skin so unfortunately the original tints the uh that you mix with your peroxide they are meant for the hair because the peroxide is what's helping open up the hair follicle to penetrate to deposit that color and then seal the hair the hair will close up so on the skin the uh tint will just last one shower so it doesn't last that long. What would have to happen after, which what I do when my tint fades from my brows, I got a beautiful uh, pen, like a, a brow pen. Uh, my goodness, why am I losing my words? Like a brow filler, like a, uh, a pen. And I just fill in the gaps with that. Usually my gaps are all in the corner of my brow. The beginning of my brow is pretty thick, so I don't need to do that. So I have a brow pen that I can just fill in with the color that I need um, on the outside. So that's what your customer might have to do in between touch-ups if they want it to look still fuller um, after the tint fades. Uh, if they use a styling gel, this could help the color to um, last a little bit longer for the client. Some, some people can have a longer wear of the, of the tint on their on their sorry uh, brows because their skin's more drier so they're not producing a lot of oils uh, so for those clients that are producing a lot of oils and feel like the, the, the tint will uh, uh, fade faster the styling gel is something that you'd want to sell them but every morning they can put that on to seal in uh, that treat that treatment that you just did for them every day until their next uh, visit 
So hopefully that answered the question. So for everyone that's asking for the uh, presentation, it will be coming through after an email. So if you're gonna charge a tint with your brow lift, so you start basically when we say an eye, an eyelash lift, when we say uh, between we say 65 to, to 85, we'd say it's without a tint. Some people do 85 both, a lift and a tint when it comes to lashes. And then if they're doing everything all together, where it's your, it's your styling as well, it's your shaping, they go up to like about $125. So with your brow lift, once again, you want to start a little bit lower than your lash lift. So if you're starting your range from, from say, 65 to 85, I would do the brow lift from 50 to maybe 65 because um, it doesn't last as long as we had mentioned, right? And then your tint usually costs you maybe for your brows 20 bucks, maybe, so $20. So um, if that's if you're starting at the range of uh, – 50 that's 70 dollars for both but once again the service is pretty hot so depending what your clientele is where you're located to that all plays a difference in what your pricing range would go so we try to give your price would be so we try to give a range uh, so that it could fit best to where you are uh, located okay uh, is it safe to wax after yes it's safe to wax afterwards uh, crystal um, because you're focusing on the hairs underneath, on the top, so you're, you're okay to wax afterwards. And that's where that bravado that we talk about, the Curl Lab gel works so amazingly because you get an accurate precision with the gel wax to create the perfect brows after a, a brow lift. Okay, so do your lifting surface first and then do your shaping. Same comes with tinting. Do your tinting first. And then do your your shape your shaping with waxing, tweezing, threading, because all this is removing the hair from the follicle, which keeps uh, the pores open. You don't want any of these solutions that you're putting on to create uh, sensitivity to the skin. Okay. So a lot of the questions are repetitive with the pricing. So hopefully everybody has had that answered. Uh, So Trish, did you get the three types of brows? It's soapy, feathered, fluffy or feathered, and laminated. Not laminated. Okay. So those are the three types of brows that you can looks that you can achieve. Hi Terry. Yes, the sensitive does uh, stain the skin and last a little bit longer because it's more of a topical uh, tint. Right, so it coats the outer layer of the hair, doesn't have the capabilities of penetrating into the hair. So the staining is more predominant and lasts a couple more showers. Uh, so a lot of people have asked uh, about the pricing. Are everybody's okay with that? Totally understand because a lot of the questions are about the pricing. Uh, so I just want to make sure everybody understands that. We will send the presentation out okay no worries we'll send the presentation out and we'll send you the uh the links and to this recording and to our website to book future webinars hi shelly so the email was on the slide i don't know if i can go back to the slide natasha can i go back to the slide and put the um nope okay so the email is reflectasil dot education at gmail i can i probably type it in give me one second let me type it in refectosil dot education at cbon group that's if somebody already beat me to it <laughs> but that's the, I hope I typed it right because I can't see the messages down there but that's the website if you have any questions to ask me about brow styling um can I please have a copy of the PDFs for the webinar? Yep, so we're going to have that for you. No worries. Let's just see if there's any more technical questions or any other questions that I didn't answer before our webinar ends. Oh. Once again, I appreciate everybody being here. Yes, I think I was able to answer everybody's questions. I think I'm hearing all these thank yous. So that was awesome. Chrissy. <laughs> It's Chrissy. Um, sorry for the presentation with the name. Um, 
Yes, it's not over. Oh, the thank yous were done way earlier. Sorry, guys. Okay. <laughs> I'm going just down to the questions. Uh, awesome. People are liking the webinars. This is good, good, good. That's our, our, that's our aim here with the webinars to help, uh, you know, strengthen your skills, increase your skills, or open your eyes to new treatments that can help you when we do reopen uh, back um our salons or spas or your home business um, and also to utilize Refectisil to its fullness right because people will know Refectisil because of their tints because they've been around for so long but what else can you do with Refectisil so these webinars are helping you as well and the future ones for me okay uh, Amy I'm a new business owner and thinking of starting these services this is great information awesome these are simple easy to do add-on service as long as you follow the protocols properly the timings uh, revisiting these webinars just to make sure you're doing everything right you will have amazing results you will be bringing in your customers uh, customers will be referring other their their friends uh, but you'll be able to make good revenue with these easy um, um, services add-on services uh, <coughs> sorry Diana if I already <laughs> Sorry. So if I already have the Reflectisil Eyelash Lift Kit, I can use this kit to start brow lamination. Yep. Yes, you can. The solutions in there are dual. Also, just to know, the solutions do expire once opening after two months. So just be careful. Mark your bottles that you've opened because two months can come like this. Except when we're back to business, too, and we have a high turnover. Or um, So just make sure, as well, that you mark when you've opened it because as the date expiry date comes, the effectiveness is less on the solutions and sometimes you can do a treatment and it doesn't turn out because the solution has expired okay so it's two months um, for Brittany why would you not use glue it's not needed it's just an extra step or an extra product that is not needed I don't have any issues even with stubborn brows I have very stubborn brows and this the lash perm solution it's actually breaking down the keratin and the bonds in the hair so the hair becomes so workable it becomes relaxed right and it becomes almost just like your spaghetti you get it hard and then when you put it in the water and it cooks it gets very like lucid is the word it gets very uh, wobbly looking so that's how your brow is so your brow is able to be worked on and be reformed so I no need to use glue and a lot of glues can actually cause sensitivity because now you're working closely onto the skin right uh, the glue on the lift for the lashes was put onto the lashes never had came in contact with the skin if you were doing it properly so now you're behind the brows is skin there's no pad there so you have to be careful with a lot of people doing HP peels or stuff like that or taking medication that can cause skin sensitivity. You want to be very careful with um, what solutions you're putting on. So there's no need to use the glue. So hopefully, Brittany, that answered your question. Uh, we, I'm sure we can get posters uh, made for, I'll speak to the marketing department for this, uh, for the brow lift. And then your local distributor uh, might have some, but uh, for if you pass on that question to me, I can pass it on to the marketing. So whoever has uh, that question about the poster, you can email me as well. Um, no certificate for these webinars, Claudia. Uh, we do have a, a consent form for Deanna. So uh, that you can email me as well. I'll try and see if I can get into the thank you email to your reply email with the rest of the um, content that I'm going to give you. But we do have a, a waiver that a consent form that fits for everything that like you're tinting, your your lash tinting, brow tinting, uh, lash lift, lash curl, um, and brow lift. Thank you, Regini, uh, for for being here. Uh, question is do you use plastic wrap when you put neutralizer or can we put wrap for good results so you put the plastic saran wrap for both solutions you put it on before for the lash perm and after for the neutralizer but mostly for the um, I would say for the lash perm just to keep the hairs in form in in to its place when you wipe off the solution and then you're putting the neutralizer but once again, I've done these treatments and we and Refectisil has tested these treatments without having to use a saran wrap. It's optional. Nope, no glue, no glue even for the thick, thick hairs I've done. Uh, 
never, I didn't have to use the glue. I tried a variety of different types of, this is for Ragini again. I've tried a, a bunch of different um, types of uh, hairs, like thicker ones as well. And mine are very stubborn too. And it didn't need any glue. So the saline solution, so for Terry, the saline solution and the aftercare gel do not come into the lash lift kit. You'd have to purchase these separately. Okay, so in the kit you will have, so the lash lift kit, because it's dual for the um, lashes as well, so brows and lashes, it has the pads, the silicone pads for the lashes, it has the glue, and it also has your brushes, your bowls, um, your orange wood stick, and the solutions. Uh, so the saline solution, the makeup remover, the styling gel all have to be purchased separately, but then you create this perfect system for your client. So I advise please keep into the Refectosil. Uh, it gives confidence to you that you enjoy using Refectosil. It gives confidence to the customer that sees that you have everything equal, like all the, you're not, you don't have a brand from this company, this company, this company, just to do one service. Um, no certificate, as I mentioned before, for this webinar. So from Nova Scotia, they have a different regulation there, Tiffany, and I believe if you're under the Association of Nova Scotia and you attended this webinar, they will provide you a certificate. So if your associations uh, need you to be having credit or I, you will be getting one from the, the Nova Scotia Association if you're under that association. But if you are a practitioner, uh, an esthetician, that can do lash services and brow services, this is okay for you to do with your, I guess your diploma from your uh, school. So as I mentioned, Tammy, the products that come in the kit are dual for both lashes and brows. So I don't know if you, if you were able to hear the message, but it comes with all the pads, the glues, the mixing bowls, brushes, and the solutions, okay? The solutions are the lash perma neutralizer. So a lot of these questions are repetitive, so I hope I answered them. I'm just trying to go a little bit faster to see what the latest ones were. Uh, Refectosil, if you want to purchase, you just got an email to the email that was provided and we'll transfer to the right person that will provide you the distributor that's closest to your uh, location where you can purchase, okay? So shelf life, we mentioned it's two months after opening for the solutions, both the lash perm and the neutralizer. If it is sealed, the expiry dates on them would have an over a year to, uh, or maybe two years. Uh, for example, the one that I have doesn't expire in 2021. So I have enough time and I, and I had it from 2019. But sealed and stored in a good place, okay? Uh, in your waxing services, remember your services first of your brow lift or your tinting and then your waxing, then your shaping. So waxing is an after lamination and after tinting. Uh, once again, uh, Lisa, if you need to purchase, send us an email and we'll direct you to the right person that will find the closest distributor to you and your location. So we're all, we're, we have to end this in about a minute. No certificate, no, uh, not over the sensitive line at all for this webinar. So there is a lot of questions, a lot of them are repetitive. If I did not get um, to answer your question, you can also email me, but we will have a, oh shoot, Natasha, it went away from me going down, sorry. Um, no, I was going down, sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry, it was so fast. Um, I was gonna say, uh, we will have a Q and A uh, question for you to be able to ask them again uh, if I don't get back to you with them as well. Okay, so I think let me just go closer to the bottom. There's a lot of questions, but um, so Rain, if you're an esthetician, you can do the services without the certification. Yes, you can, depending on uh, where you're located. If you're in the states, you do need. Um, I believe they need. Some of them require certificate, I'm not quite sure. But here, if you have your diploma and you already went to school for it, you can pick up, and you're practicing beauty professional, you can do these services, okay? So unfortunately, uh, our time is up, so I won't be able to answer any more of these questions, but I do appreciate everybody being on this webinar, learning about the brow lamination. You will enjoy and love doing this. Your customers will be flowing in once we're back to our original state with our businesses. 
Uh, if you have any further questions, you have the uh, links to go to to watch any past webinars as well. We will be sending you the information you need after this webinar. Give us about 24 hours it takes for you to be able to receive the information from this webinar. So I wish everybody all the best in this time as well too that we're dealing with. I hope everybody and their families are doing well. And until the next webinar, I wish you all uh, safe health, okay? Thank you so much.